Well, we're starting to enter solar maximum. We're seeing the sun come alive. You notice that it, the sun comes alive in spurts, has periods of quiet, and then it, it comes alive with series of activity and CMEs, solar flares. Notice how this one came right at the end of a predominant major body alignment. Now, that's no coincidence. Trust me. We had an X flare? Are you kidding me? An X flare already? Well, we usually start and finish these solar cycles with X flares. X flares uh, measured by the amount of radiation coming off uh, the flare. And not so much the speed or the size or, or how much plasma is being ejected. But if you look at what's transpired in this past week, you see that we've had a series of geomagnetic storms that... Uh, you know, normally would not be anything of concern. But the fact that you're amplifying a background radiation that's extremely high with normal radiation, then then you're talking about a lot. You're talking about more than we're used to getting here on planet Earth. A good analogy would be like you you normally run your boiling water at medium temp but you add to it a red hot molten ball of iron and you drop it in the water and all of a sudden the pot boils well that's kind of what's happening you're adding to what is normal something that isn't normal and that is these background cosmic rays that are emitting various forms of radiation photon radiation, ionizing radiation. And when I say ionizing radiation, that means it's so powerful that when the the photon, which is a wave, a wave of energy, hits an atom, it energizes the atom so much that the atom loses its electron. It's like spinning a ball on a rope so fast that it breaks the rope. And the ball goes flying off into Never Never Land. So, it's no coincidence that we finish major alignment. We've had a few earthquakes, and we have a few solar flares. What's the relationship between alignments and CMEs? That's a relationship. We were the first people to draw that relationship. Uh, people were saying that the CMEs were causing earthquakes, but we were having earthquakes on the same days as CMEs, and not... Not so much when the CME hit the Earth, but then we notice when the CME compressed the magnetosphere, almost at the exact minute that was happening, we were seeing earthquakes that were very well timed to that compression event, those compression events. So you have to conclude that the same forces that caused your earthquake before you had a compression that also cause the coronal mass ejections. And so you have to conclude that somehow tidal forces are aggravating the active regions and creating a solar flare. But if you don't know what a solar flare is, it's kind of hard to further that hypothesis. But, you know, when you think of the obvious, when you don't ignore the obvious, it suddenly becomes more and more easy to understand the relationship between large body alignments and and other significant alignments and coronal mass ejections you know it's it's really about the surface plasma and when you see these active regions you see loops of plasma traveling extremely high speeds slamming into the active region so you can't take really hot plasma and slam it into more hot plasma without causing fusion and fission. And so the, the real kicker, the straw that breaks the camel's back that triggers you know, a very large coronal mass ejection is when you have a magnetic connection 
that impacts the surface plasma. It, just like the tide does to the oceans, it pulls the oceans out and then it surges the ocean in. And when the ocean surges in, then you take the collision and the compression of plasma and you multiply it by tremendous factors. This was an impressive event. Depressing was the way that it was reported by NOAA. We don't know if it's Earth directed because LASCO is down. Never mind SDO. Never mind Stereo A. Never mind the network gong, G O N G. N never man mind uh, those uh, near real time uh, telescopes. No, they could not tell us if this was going to be Earth directed. They even mentioned that it could show up at the same time as a coronal hole stream. And they said, but if it does, Yahoo, yippee, they're jumping up and down. Why? Because we get these beautiful auroras. Oh, how special. They got us plan planning and praying for auroras. They got us celebrating auroras. Meanwhile, forgetting that your dashboard temperature uh, surges to 195 degrees. Yeah, just never mind that. Never mind the children playing in direct sunlight. But you can see here by some of these diagrams, uh, they've showed now two CMEs broadsiding Earth, and they finally got one to actually demonstrate what the Class X flare has done. And you'll see in the upper left-hand uh, simulation, initially they had it missing Earth. Yep, missing Earth. But no, you know, uh, a few days later, when, you know, they're basically the warning to stay out of the sun, the warning to uh, watch your children. And, you know, um, by the time that uh, they finally uh, showed the actual impacts, then uh, it was almost too late. Uh, this, this was put up today, showing an impact today. Well, thank you for the advance warning, but uh, that's why we have a Patreon channel so that we can, uh, you know, make you aware of these things before N NASA decides to make you aware of these things. Uh, again, um, I'm I'm just uh, trying to take some pictures of the solar activity, the recent solar activity, um, and we love it when there's a, a planetary transit, but the the sun is becoming more and more active and the baseline x-rays are going up and they're going to be added to the already increase that we have seen so you know can you imagine by 2023 when we have triple the sunspots what the x-rays are going to be like now there is a slight chance that these coronal mass ejections will eventually push the cosmic rays away from the sun and reestablish the heliosphere. Uh, that's that uh, bow shock boundary where it acts like a force field and kind of pushes away some of these cosmic rays. The issue is, is most of these cosmic rays are neutral before they get to the sun. So pushing them out there cannot be a matter of electrons and a matter of protons. It's going to be a matter of collision and and particle pressure. If these if these particles, these atoms that are racing into the towards the sun, if they were magnetized, positive or negative, then the outgoing positive and negative would do a better job of capturing and exchanging and pushing and attaching to these cosmic rays, but they're neutral. So it doesn't matter if you have a strong magnetic field uh, because neutral particles are impervious to that kind of magnetic attraction. Here I think before you is that class X flare. Uh, I, I do believe, uh, it's hard to say because um, they were so late in reporting it. 
and initially they reported it as a class M flare. A class X is a step up from class M. Well, why they go from M to X, I don't know. What well, you think they would just step it up one letter M N O P kind of stuff, but you know, who knows? Now this is a chronograph, a, a snapshot image of the corona. Does it look kind of strange to you? Well, Planet X is off to the upper left. So I ask you, what part of the corona is the brightest and widest? W-I-D-E-S-T, widest. And then look at the right-hand side of the corona. Look how it appears that the left-hand side has been focused and redirected. And I do believe this, these are not just active regions creating streamers that light up the particles in the corona. I do believe what you are seeing is the interaction and electron exchange and particle collision occurring in these streams. And since Planet X is off to the upper left, it kind of makes sense what you're looking at right now. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So, keep your eyes on the sky. Protect your windows. Shield your windows with reflective barrier. Um, X-rays are easily reflected. More so than gamma. And more so than neutrons. But, every little bit helps. And until next time, be prepared, not scared.